I wonder if um, can you work this back in with me? Well, when I posted yesterday, last night, saying, "Oh, like to watch us tomorrow," Philip's girlfriend tagged him in it and said, "You need to watch this because Kingston was like he had to leave his last condom first, but he wants a um, tour for it to make sure that's done." One minute. The lights are hitting me. That's what we'll have to figure out about. I want one of those other signs there, but that still does look just a little big. Maybe we'll just do our bookcase with our awards or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, don't do that. Those are actually really good colors, the beige and the navy. Absolutely. Okay, one more minute. Go up there, Pastor. You guys want water? <laughs> you can start. You don't have to start exactly. Okay. All right. You ready? Sure. I'll tell you when it's good time. Hey guys, thank you for joining us. I'm Ashley French. And good day. I'm right. And we are the Turner Real Estate Network. And today we are going to be talking to you about the pros and the cons of buying a bank owned property. We know we've had plenty of buyers that are interested in buying a foreclosure or bank owned property. And there's always lots of questions. Is it the right idea? Should I do this? Should I move forward? So we thought it'd be a great topic to talk to all of you guys about and then give you the pros and cons and you can make the decision if it's the right move for you. So before we get started into the pros and the cons, Ray, if you'll talk a little bit about the market conditions here where we're at and, you know, with the bank owned properties. Sure. And I think, um, you know, most of the time the question is, hey, I want to get a deal. I want to get a foreclosure. And I think uh, in times gone, gone by, there was a bigger inventory of uh, foreclosure, especially back in 2011 or so. Right now, not so much. So you really, if you're looking for that deal, you've got to take into consideration market conditions. That definitely plays into your investment strategy or your buy strategy if you're just looking to purchase to live in it. So the right now it's an unusual marketplace because the whether it's a buy, sell, or neutral market is actually depending on the price point. So 150 to 250 is all out a seller's market right now. Big audience, low inventory. Right. And so right now that tends to be the, the playground for the people that want to find a deal. And uh, really, unfortunately, right now, there's not a lot of great deals to be had yeah, and in that price point. Like you said, since that's the hottest price point between 150 and 250, you've got the most competition. So that there's that many buyers that are also looking for the best deal in this area who you're competing against. So it does make it very difficult. And the banks know that. So they're not going to price the house under value. They're going to want to get yeah, and the thing is, is they're looking for market value in a lot of cases, unless it's a bit more dilapidated, in which case you need to be more of an investor for that one. Right. So. Okay. Well, we'll just jump right into the cons. We're going to talk about the negative aspects of buying a bank-owned property first, and then we'll talk about the positive aspects uh, at the end. So the very first one with a bank-owned property is that the bank has no knowledge of the property. They don't know anything about it. They don't know about the history or what's gone on in that house. And they don't have any answers about any of the components. So they don't know anything about the electrical or the plumbing or the age of the appliances or if the roof leaks. So that that's a, that's a negative. That's a con because as a buyer, you really don't have anyone to go to to ask questions. Like if it was a resale, you could go to the seller and say, hey, what do you know about this or this? Not with a bank. They have no knowledge, and they're going to put that right in the listing. They're going to tell you up front, yeah. we're claiming no knowledge. We don't know anything. It's up to you as the buyer to do your due diligence to figure out, you know, can the house pass inspection, what's going on with it. But that's one of the, the negative aspects is that the bank knows nothing. Yeah, and so a normal seller's disclosure, you would have some of that information in there to the best of my knowledge. But these, you know, inevitably these homes have been sitting vacant. Yeah. And so you really have got some bigger concerns like mold and, and things, especially in Florida. So, you know, you, as you're walking through a house that's been sitting vacant, you really want to 
really take a close look at it. And inevitably, there's some bigger issues. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so um, another uh, con or someone may see as a negative aspect is that when a bank sells a bank, a foreclosure, a bank owned home, they are selling it usually as is, which they're going to put that right in the listing. The home's being sold as is, which the difference is if you're buying a resale and there's a seller involved and you do your inspections and let's say you find that there is a leak or the plumbing needs to be looked at or repaired, usually you can go to the seller and try to negotiate some of those repairs before closing and try to get the seller to make the repairs. Well, with a bank, if they're telling you they're selling it as is, they're not lifting a finger. They're not going to do any repairs. They don't care what your inspection came back and said. They don't care if the roof is leaking. If they're listing this as an as is sale, that's exactly what it is. So you don't have the benefit of going back to the seller and trying to get some items repaired before closing. You're literally buying it exactly how it sits as you see it. Another con, um, a negative aspect that we wanted to touch on is that with a bank owned home, remember when it does come time to negotiating, you're not negotiating with a seller. You have to keep this in mind. A lot of times the person at the bank who makes the final decision to accept the offer or to make a counter offer is somebody sitting at a desk, somebody, they may not even be in your state. They could be in a completely different state. They're not going to have any real estate knowledge. They're probably not going to have any knowledge of our market, the neighborhood. They surely have no idea what the house really looks like in person. So it can be really frustrating. You're negotiating with someone who really doesn't know anything about the home. So it can make it very difficult. They may be looking at a number on a computer or they may have a file that just tells them this is the bottom line. This is the number we have to walk away with. We don't care about anything else. Whereas with a seller in a resale, you can take some things back to them, try to renegotiate. They know the condition of the house. They may be more willing to wiggle or you know meet you halfway. But when it comes to a bank, you just have to keep that in mind. The person you're negotiating with is just somebody sitting at the desk, working for the bank, just looking at numbers, and that's it. So Yeah, and that being said, I mean, obviously, there's some really skilled realtors in the area that specialize in REOs, teams that specialize in REOs, and so they can certainly influence those asset mm -hmm. managers and educate them on certain things. So we do have real estate agents in the area that are experts that will help along that way. That being said, the asset manager has the final say. Yeah. Right. And then the last uh, negative or the last uh, con we're going to discuss is uh, sometimes with a foreclosure or bank owned property, just be prepared that there might be extra paperwork that you're not going to see with a regular sale of a home. Uh, usually they have extra addendums that they're going to have you sign. So if you have bought a home before, just be prepared. You may see some extra paperwork or addendums that you're not used to seeing. And then also uh, a lot of the banks like to tack on either a processing fee or a uh, technology fee in your closing cost. It's just an administrative fee. It's just their way to get a couple hundred dollars extra out of you at closing to take care of maybe some of their, their administrative paperwork that they did to get the house listed. And then before we go on to the positives, there is one thing we should probably mention with a bank owned home. If you're an investor. Yeah, look for seasoning, yeah. I mean, they're offering it up to people that want to buy it as their primary residence first. Right. So the seasoning has definitely come back. I mean, um, in the heat of the market, when there was a huge inventory of these, I think we're at the 30 days um, before investors could participate, it went back down to 21. And I see recently, we see some out there at just seven days because the inventory is so low anyways. Right. Um, so if you are an investor, if you're looking to just purchase a bank owned home to fix up and flip, just keep in mind that when that bank owned home hits the MLS and it's available for purchase, just read the fine print because it may say that they're delaying maybe seven days or all the way up to 30 days before an investor can participate because the banks would like to see a family or a couple purchase the home and make it their primary residence. So just keep that in mind as an investor, there may be a waiting period before you can participate in the purchase. Yep. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move on to the positives, all the pros of buying a bank owned property. And the first one and probably the most enticing and what people think of when they hear bank owned property is that the home might be offered at a lower price. Now, like Ray mentioned, you know, with the market and, uh, you know, the banks are wanting to get top dollar for the house. 
That being said, if the house is uh, not in the best condition or it does need some repairs, that home may be offered at a lower price, which is a benefit to a buyer because if you do have a little money to put into it or if you are handy and you can do the repairs, you might be purchasing a fantastic investment where you'll have equity in the home really quickly. Yep. Just do your math on the repairs, make sure it makes sense. Exactly. And then another uh, pro, uh, positive aspect of buying a bank-owned home that we're seeing is that as a buyer, when you're making an offer to the bank to purchase a home, make sure you ask for them to pay for some of your closing costs because more and more we are seeing that if you ask in your offer that the bank pays maybe $3,000, $4,000 of your closing costs, we're actually seeing that the banks are accepting that and they're more than willing to pay some of the buyer's closing costs. So I know with a resale, when you're dealing with a seller, it's usually really hard to get them to pay closing costs. They don't want to come off of an extra penny if they don't have to. But when it comes to the bank, they understand that closing costs can add up and it's a lot of cash out of pocket. So that's a great positive aspect of buying a bank on home is that usually they will help you a little bit on your closing costs. It's going to be like any negotiation. You can't bang on both sides. Yeah. You know, you're banging on price and you want these additional terms as far as closing costs. Right. You know, just bear in mind, it needs to make sense. Exactly. Right? All right. And then so another positive um, aspect is that typically before you get to the closing table with a bank, they're going to do all the due diligence of making sure that the title is clean and transferable at closing. So if there were any liens put against the home or the previous homeowners, uh, maybe if there was a mechanical lien or a tax lien, the bank is going to clear that up, expunge it, take care of it before you get to the closing table. The bank is not going to allow you to close on a home that has a clouded title. So that's another benefit. The bank is going to take care of that. They're going to do the work. They're going to do the due diligence to take care of it. And that's one thing as a buyer, you don't have to worry about, it'll be taken care of and you can rest easy knowing that you're buying a home that doesn't have any clouds on the title. Yeah. And then another positive aspect, and this one is probably the most exciting is that more and more, we are seeing that before the banks put the home on the market, they're actually going into some of these foreclosures and actually sprucing them up, which is really surprising. A lot of people, when they think of foreclosure, they think terrible condition, needs all this work. But actually, what the bank is doing is I've seen they're making sure that the kitchen has appliances. They're making sure that there's flooring in the house. So instead of a room that just has concrete, they'll go ahead and throw in some carpet. And the reason the bank is doing this is because if they don't do it, they're limiting their buyers. If they don't fix the house up and it is in terrible condition, really all they can get is a cash offer because financing, you know, they're not going to pass inspections. There's going to be all kinds of trouble they run into if they're trying to use conventional FHA, VA financing. So the banks want the widest audience of buyers possible. So they're actually going in and doing a few minor repairs. They're just yeah. getting the house up to the minimum standard so that they know it'll pass an FHA inspection, a VA inspection, which is great news for you as a buyer because more than likely you are using some type of financing and you're going to have to pass an inspection. So this is great news. The bank's going in and doing the bare minimum to make sure that you can use, you can use your financing and purchase the home. Yeah, they're getting advice from those local realtors that we were talking about that specialize in uh, real estate-owned property. So they'll go in, hey, we could really use some new carpet, there's no appliances, and so they'll put that whole thing together. So a lot of advice. And then, of course, the bank is then looking for more market price for it. Right, yeah. right. So that's just an extra benefit that uh, maybe you didn't know as far as a bank-owned home. You think that you know it needs all this work, but you never know. You might find one that's actually in decent condition. So we've gone over a lot of pros and cons when it comes to buying a bank owned home. But before we finish, we did want to talk about some myths because we hear it all the time. We talk to buyers, they've heard myths. They think they know what's going on with a foreclosure in a bank owned home. And so we just want to debunk some of these myths. And the first one is that a lot of buyers think that if they buy a bank owned home, that they're looking at months and months of you know paperwork and a closing process and they might not be able to move into the home for four to six months. That is not the case. These banks, they're like, we, like we've said, they're getting the house ready. So by the time they've listed it on the market, 
the house is ready to go and they're eager. They want to sell it. So most of the time, a bank can close within 45 days, which is the typical closing we would see for a resale home anyways. So it's not like it, I know back when there were- Yeah, I think the myth was, the myth was probably true five, six years ago. Right. There's such an inventory and, and particularly on the short sale side, that administrative process was really painful. Right. Um, and it was long, but in, in today's world, it's not. Yeah. So don't have to worry about that. You can close and be into your bank on home within 45 days. The next myth that we want to talk about, which I think is the most important and the one that we really want to hit on in this video, and that is most buyers think because it's a bank owned home, because it's a foreclosure, that the bank is in a desperate situation and that they can throw out a crazy offer. They can offer 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 below the asking price and the bank is going to accept it. That's not the case. That is not going to happen. Just like you mentioned, the banks are using local real estate agents to get an idea of what the market conditions are, what the house is worth, and they're pricing it accordingly. They're not in a huge hurry to get the, the house off the books, and they will let the house sit until they get a reasonable offer. They are not going to accept a crazy low ball offer just to get the house off the books. That is one of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to foreclosures and bank owned properties. And really you're wasting your time as a buyer if you throw a crazy low offer because more than likely if it's crazy enough, the bank's going to just deny it. They're not even going to counter because they think that you're not serious. Well, they're still business people. I mean, there's inherent costs with doing a foreclosure for a bank. It's expensive. Right. So it's not like, you know, it'd be nice for them to recover those costs if they right. can, or at least a portion of them. Right. And like you said, since there's not as many bank-owned foreclosure homes on the market like there was maybe five or six years ago, they're not really drowning in foreclosures like they were. They have more time, and yeah. they will take their time until they get a reasonable offer that makes sense. So just keep that in mind if you are interested in a bank-owned home or a foreclosure. Just be practical. Use your real estate agent. They're the expert, and they will help you to know what the market's like in that area, what the houses are going for in that community, and then make an offer that makes sense, that's reasonable. And there's a really good chance that you'll get the house if, if you use some of this yeah, advice. Yeah, I think <laughs> overall you got to look at the marketplace. If you're looking in that really hot price point with a low inventory, the chance of getting a, a, a a property that's in great condition and that's a foreclosure that's a deal it's just a misnomer it's, it's just not happening so mm -hmm. you just a, you got just as good a chance as finding you know a, a really motivated seller outside of that scenario that to get a deal right. so it's just you know look at the marketplace um, the deal may be in a property that's a bit more dilapidated if you've got the appetite for that outside of that it's not not, well, not what you think right now right yeah all right, so we've talked to you a little bit about the pros and cons. We've debunked some myths. We talked about the market conditions. But if you have further questions, if there's something we didn't answer, we do ask that you reach out to us. You can comment right below on this video if you have further questions. You can give us a call if you have extra questions that we didn't answer. And if you are interested in looking into buying a bank-owned home, we would love for you to reach out to us. We have a list that we can send you uh, depending on where you want to be and your price point. We can put a list together and send that to you so you can see what is available out there. And if you know anyone maybe who is looking to invest or interested in a foreclosure bank owned property, go ahead and tag this in, them in this video or share this video with them because we'd love to get this information out to everyone who you know maybe just doesn't know that much about it or who's interested in it or in the future maybe thinking about buying. So. We appreciate you guys taking your time to sit with us today and learn a little bit more about bank owned homes, and uh, we will be talking to you guys soon. Bye for now. Awesome. We had seven and eight people all simultaneously. Hello.